Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made, and I shall, or we shall, rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. I want to thank you for tuning in to our Friday night Holy Ghost service. I'm Elder Joseph Cotton from Maxwell Gospel Church, where Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah. I want to connect tonight's message along with the message I had last week. Amen. Because I want you to understand clearly that God has supplied all of our needs according to his riches and his glory. Everything that you need in this life to be successful, God has placed it on the inside of you. Amen. Your provision, your, your, your plan, your, your, your dreams, Everything that you need to live a successful, overcoming life, God has already equipped you with everything you need on the inside of you. Amen. And last week, I was sharing in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, I think it's verse 16, and he's saying that, that you are the temple of God. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So when you receive Jesus into your heart as your personal Lord and Savior, God has blessed you with everything you need to live or overcome a overcoming life in this world. Well, well, how, 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 show, show me that in the Bible. I, I'm glad you asked. I want you to turn to Genesis chapter one. Cause I have a question. I'm going to read the scripture, but I'm going to ask you a question. Because I believe God has given me a revelation on this. Amen. And I want you to see it. So he said in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, he says, In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And the light was good. And God saw that the light was good. I want you to, uh, uh, matter of fact, let me ask you the question. Where was the light before God spoke it into an existence? Huh? Make you say, hmm. You remember that with Arsenio Hall back in the day? Things that make you say, hmm. Where was the light before God spoke it into an existence? Well, God already had the light on the inside of him. The light, saints, was on the inside of God. The stars, the sun, the moon, everything that he created in Genesis was already on the inside of him. And he only spoke what he seen on the inside and spoke it to an existence so he can see it on the outside. Hallelujah. I want you to understand that God, when he filled you with the Holy Ghost, when he filled you with his spirit, God will start to reveal the things to you that he wants you to do in this world. He will start revealing it to you so that you will have a vision for your life so that when you get hold of that vision, now every day you get up, you know what you working to. You, you know what you working for. You, you pushing and you, you gonna grind until you accomplish that thing that you see on the inside. But how do we make what we see on the inside come to an existence on the outside? You have to watch what you saying. Because people kill their life and mess up their life because all they see is negativity. And God trying to get you to see the positive things in life. Don't you know that trials and tribulations only come to push you into your destination? Because the enemy hates what God has planned for your life. So you got to stay connected to God and make sure that you cast the devil out of your life because he's the one that's trying to discourage you and trying to get you not to keep pressing towards the things that God has planned for your life. So watch this in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Watch this. 
1 Corinthians chapter 2, we're going to pick it up at verse 9. Watch this. I'm going to read it in the King James Version. And then I'm also going to read it in a in a good news translation. Amen. I like the different translations because they help you to get a good understanding. Hallelujah. But it says this. It says, but as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have it entered into the heart of man, the things which God has prepared for them that love him. Do you love the Lord? Because he got some stuff planned for you. Watch this in verse 10. He said, but God has revealed them unto us by his spirit. And that spirit is with a capital S because it's referring to God, the Holy Spirit. For the spirit search of all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man? Say the spirit of man which is in him. Even so, the things of God know of no man, but the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given on to us of God, which things also we speak. What do you speak? The things that God has given to you. He say, those are the things that we speak. Not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, because somebody with man wisdom would discourage you. He says, which things also we speak, not in the words which man wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. So if you ain't saved, you can't get nothing from God. If you ain't connected to Jesus, you can't understand spiritual things. He said, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judge of all things, yet he himself is judge of no man. For who have known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? Have we, but we have the mind of Christ. Now watch this in the Good News Translation. It says, however, as the scripture says, what no one ever saw or heard, what no one ever thought could happen, is the very thing God prepared for those who love him. But it was to us that God made known his secret by means of, of his spirit. The spirit search of everything, even the hidden, even the hidden depths of God purposes. It is only our own spirit within us that knows all about us. In the same way, only God's spirit knows all about God. We have not received this, 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 this world spirit. We have not received this world spirit. Instead, we have received the Spirit sent by God so that we may know all that God has given us. So then, we do not speak in words taught by human wisdom, but in words taught by the Spirit. As we explain spiritual truths to those who have the Spirit, whoever does not have the Spirit cannot receive the gifts that come from God's Spirit. So a person really does not understand them and they seem to be nonsense because they are value, because their value can be judged only on a spiritual basis. Whoever has the spirit, whoever is able to judge the value of everything, but no one is able to judge him. As the scripture says, who knows the mind of the Lord? Who is able to give him advice? We, however, have the mind of Christ. I know that was a lot of scripture reading, but I want you to understand this. When God comes into your life, it's his job to reveal to you the purpose and the plan that God has laid out for you. So he says, but 
It as it is written, your eye have not seen, nor ear heard. Now he's not talking about your natural eyes, the two eyes, because you have two eyes in the natural. But he said, your eye have not seen. He's talking about the spiritual man on the inside of you. He has sight too. But his things is what he see in the spiritual realm. So he said, your eye have not seen, nor ear heard. Because we hear the Holy Ghost on the inside of us. He say, neither have I entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. But God has revealed them on us by his spirit. So God will reveal by his spirit to your spirit the things that God has prepared for those who love him. God has to reveal the things that he has planned for your life. To you, he said, your eye have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have it entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love him. But God has revealed unto them, the, the, but God has revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit search of all things, yea, the deep things of God, because God has to give you a revelation on the things that he has planned for your life. That's why the enemy tries so hard to confuse us. That's why he's always trying to direct us and, and give us false information. That's why he's always trying to discourage us and, 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 and instead of trying to encourage us because he come to steal your dream. He come to steal your revelation. He come to steal your desires. He come to steal your life and destroy your life if you let him. But you got to hold on to the things that God has blessed you with. Whatever you believe God has blessed you to be and want you to be, your dreams, your revelations, you got to connect yourself to Jesus so that Jesus can bring it to pass. Because God will reveal to you his plan that he has for your life. He say, because yea, and in verse 10, yea, the deep things of God. And in verse 11, for what man knoweth the things of a man, say the spirit of man, which is in him. See, you, you can't you can't lean to your own understanding when you're dealing with spiritual things. See, we always trying to figure God out. And you can't figure God out. You can't figure God out. You got to trust God and lean out to your own understanding. See, when God give you a revelation on what you're going to be, if he give you a dream on what you're going to accomplish, on what you're going to be, you got to hold on to that thing. Then you got to start preparing yourself to be successful when it come to pass. See, you can't have a dream and don't work towards it. You got to have a dream and you got to start doing what you need to do so that you can qualify for that position when you get it. Amen. You can't wait to get the position and then try to get the qualifications to get the job. No, you got to already be qualified for the job. So the trials and the tribulations that we go through is to, is to prepare us and to help us to be fully mature in him because the way God develop us is through the trials and the tribulations and helping us to trust in him because you don't fulfill your purpose on your own so that you can take all the credit from God. No, God makes things so hard to where you need him to accomplish it. You need God to help you to accomplish the things that God has prepared in your life. Guess what? Because we got billions of people here on this planet. And there's a whole bunch of people got your same dream. But everybody in this world don't have God. See, that's why you need God to make your life successful. You need to stay connected to the Lord Jesus Christ so that he can show you the path that you need to take. That's why he's our Lord, because he's the one that lead us and guide us and direct our path. I don't care what the world look like right now. You can't get you can't get caught up in that. When God giving you a path to take to fulfill the purpose in your life, sometimes the road don't look like you're going the right way. But God, He's on He got you on a fast track. Matter of fact, God will take you on a shortcut. See, a lot of us we try to we try to fulfill our dreams and we take the long route. 
But if you get God connected to your dreams and your desires, God will show you a shortcut. But the shortcut sometimes don't look too good. It look like you're going the wrong way. Why? Why? Why do it look? Because it don't look right. That's why David said, though I walk, the Lord is my shepherd. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He making me to lie down in the green path. He leaded me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. He leaded me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because God is with me. The paths to your success, sometimes God got to take you through the darkness. It looked like everything around you was dying. But that's the way to the promised land. The children of Israel had to walk through the wilderness for 40 years. 40 years, round and round and round. And the promised land was right on the other side. But the problem why they had to stay in the darkness so long, because they started complaining. They start complaining about the condition. They start wanting to go back to Egypt. God, when God bring you out of Egypt, he got to get Egypt out of you. He got to get Egypt out of you before you mess up the promised land with your bad attitude or with your ghetto fired mentality. You can't be in Beverly Hills living on top of the hill. Now you got a million dollars and you still got a two dollar mentality. That don't make no sense. You got a $2 mentality with $2 million in the bank. That ain't going to work. No, he got to change your mind. He got to he gotta change the way you look at yourself. You got to you gotta start acting like God. God made you in his image and of his likeness. And God wants you to speak things into an existence. He wants you to call things that be not as though they are. You got to start being like God. You got to start being like the Holy Ghost and revealing to you that, that you should be. Because the Holy Ghost is your helper. He is your helper in a time of trouble. He will tell you how to get out of trouble if you got ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Man, watch this. He said, because man will trip you up. So in verse 11, he said, for, for what man knoweth the things of a man? Say the Spirit of man, which is in him. Even so, the things of God knoweth no man, but the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that God are freely, that God are freely given to us of God. Let me read that again in verse 12. First Corinthians chapter two, verse 12. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. God is giving us some things that is freely given to us. Not of the world. You can't look to the world and try to figure out the plan that God has for your life. You need Jesus to give you a revelation. You need him to give you instructions. That's why you need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Why? So he can lead you and guide you. Why? So he can teach you all things. Why? So he can keep your mind in perfect peace. Why? Because he's your helper. And when trouble comes, guess what? The Bible says greater is he that is inside you than he that's in the world. But you got to be filled with the power of God. That's why you need the Holy Ghost. Because he will bless you and keep you on the right path that God has for you. Instead of you leaning to the world trying to figure out the plan that God has for your life. Don't you know man going to trip you up? Man don't want, man, man is jealous. They hate on you all the time. You need to shake them haters off. Them haters, they, they ain't giving you the right instructions. They giving you instructions for you to fail. Because if you make it, you're going to make them look bad. 
You need to keep your mind on the eyes of the Lord. You need to keep your eyes and your life in the hands of the Lord. And he will bless you and give you the instructions that you need to be successful. So when you're successful, you ain't got to thank man for nothing. Because God the one that blessed you there. He the one that put you on the mountain child. That's why you got to give God all the praise and all the glory right now. Because you ain't even supposed to be alive right now. Matter of fact, you could have been dead and gone a long time ago. But God bless you with still being able to be here. And you tripping. You trip. Don't you know people die every day, never fulfilling the purpose and the plan that God had for their life? You need to get connected to the one that give life, not the one that take life. Man take life. The devil take life. But God, he, he, he the one that give life. So you got to stay connected to the one that lived. God is not dead. God is alive. Jesus is not dead. Jesus is alive. How do I know? Because he inside of me right now. He the one instructing me right now what to say. Y'all looking and thinking y'all talking to Joseph. This ain't Joseph. This is the Holy Ghost. He said, which things also we speak. Not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. See, you gotta, you gotta stay connected to the Holy Ghost, because the Holy Ghost will teach you all things. Watch this in verse 13. In the good news translation. So then. We do not speak in words. Taught by human wisdom. But in words. Taught by the spirit. As we explain. Spiritual truths to those. Who have the spirit. Verse 14. Whoever does not have the spirit. Cannot receive the gifts that come from God's spirit. Such a person really does not understand them. And they seem to be nonsense to him. Nonsense. Because their value can be judged only on the spiritual basis. So why are you telling people about your dreams? Why do you keep sharing with people? The things that you believe God going to do in your life. Because that's all they're doing is killing your dreams with negativity and unbelief. Joseph told his brothers, matter of fact, and told his daddy about his dream. And what did they do? His own brothers got jealous of the dream Joseph was talking about. And they threw him in the pit for him to die. But God had, he had some people coming by and they decided, let, let him not die in the pit. Let us, let us sell him and let him become a slave. God had a ram in the bush for Joseph, sold him into slavery, but slavery was actually his transportation to his destination. If it had not been for Joseph's brothers backstabbing him, selling him into slavery. If it had not been for Potiphar's wife lying on him, all them trials and tribulations prepared and pushed Joseph in the position that God needed him to be in. So we got to thank God for our trials and tribulations. Instead of complaining about them, start praising God and thank God that he allowed you to suffer for him. Thank God that he saw fit that you were strong enough to go through some trials and tribulations. Hallelujah. Because when you go through trials and tribulations, you get closer to God. God uses the trick of the enemy. He uses the tricks of the enemy to push you into your destiny. So we celebrate. We rejoice. When we're going through, even when we get up and it's hard every day, we got to thank God for it because God is about to do something new in your life. 
Because you ain't going to be suffering always, brother. You ain't going to be suffering always, sister. God got some joy if you just can hold on. God got some joy if you can just hold on. He say weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. You got to hold on to the promises of God because God want to do something new in your life. So here it is. He says in verse 14 again, he say, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of God. For they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. Or they don't understand anything when you're talking about spiritual things. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things. Yet he himself is judge of no man. For who have known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him. But we have the mind of Christ. How do you get the mind of Christ? You got to be in the word of God. You got to read the word of God often. You got to listen to the word of God. You got to listen to the preachers that God bless you with in your life. So that your spiritual man can be strong and powerful. But if you don't put nothing inside of your spirit, you're going to be weak. And when trials and tribulations come, you're going to fall out. But if trials and tribulations come and you're full of the Holy Ghost, God will get you up, pick you up, and set you up and put you back in line. Because a good man fall down. But a good man keeps standing back up. Because he know God is not done yet. Well, saints of God, that's what I have for you tonight. I pray that this broadcast has been a blessing to you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I pray, I, I believe that somebody needed this word tonight. God sent me on this broadcast to touch you and to bless you and to encourage you because God is not done with you yet. Don't give up. He said, weeping may endure for a night. It can be a long night, but one thing for sure, joy is going to come in the morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Somebody could be watching this broadcast and this is your first time. I want you to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Life only begins once you get saved. When you're unsaved, you can do a whole bunch of stuff that take your life. People get high and overdose every day. People get drunk and die every day. You don't want to live your life that way. Because of that life, that life is going to cause you to die early. And God said you shall live and not die. So Heavenly Father... Touch the heart of your people now. Romans 10 and I say, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, the Bible says you shall be saved. Can you say, Lord Jesus, forgive me for all my sins. I do believe that you died on the cross and were buried. And on the third day, God the Father raised you from the dead. And right now, Lord Jesus, I open the doors to my heart and I receive you into my heart as my Lord and my personal Savior. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. If you just said that prayer, I want you to know the Bible says greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world. If you enjoyed this broadcast, I want to ask you to go to actsfullgospel.org actfullgospel.org and look for the donation button and please give a donation to the church. Amen. The Bible says if you give, it shall be given unto you. Press down, shaking together and running over. God shall have men bless you and bless you with increase. Bless you with the things you have need of to be successful in this life. You also can give on the cash app 
at Acts Full Gospel Oakland. Acts Full Gospel Oakland. On the Cash App, you can look for us on Givelify or whatever way you want to give. Amen. Just give so that you can be blessed. Thank you once again for tuning in to this broadcast. We'll see you next week. God bless.